The Baggies Podcast, giving you the latest news, views and opinions on all things Albion. Now available on YouTube, Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Hello and welcome back to the Baggies Podcast. Another episode here giving you a bit of match reaction. And we're also going to talk a bit more about Albion as a whole, plans for next season and etc. But it's been a bit of a delay since our last episode. Had some important exams, so I haven't been able to get a podcast out to you immediately after the Wolves game. However, I can do it now. I can get you guys in the picture. You may have to track your minds back to Monday evening where we secured a one all draw against Wolverhampton after going a goal down. This was uh, a game in which uh, caused a lot of um, debate amongst Albion fans and Wolves fans as well. We'll be talking about that a bit later on in the episode. But uh, if you are new around here, make sure you're following the podcast. Make sure you're subscribed on your podcast platform, whether that's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, Google Podcasts, whatever you're listening on. Just make sure you subscribe because you'll get this podcast delivered directly to your inbox if you are subscribed. It's easy. Honestly, just the button, subscribe. Or you can leave us a review if you're on Apple, Apple Podcast. It really does help us. Even if you don't want to write anything, just click how many stars you think I deserve. Or think, just click, if it's an episode that you enjoyed, just click how many stars you think the guests enjoyed. But today, we're talking all things Wolverhampton Wanderers. And make sure you're following us on Twitter, at the Baggies Pod or at LouisBent underscore. That really helps me out. And also, it can mean that you can get involved with the podcast. I ask for your thoughts regularly and you can give your thoughts and I can read them out in the podcast. Or even if you wanted to send in your thoughts, a video or voice clip, you could send them to the baggies podcast at gmail.com. But it's so enough yaddering on from me. Let's get straight into some match reaction from Wolves West Bromwich Albion. Match reaction on the Baggies podcast, giving you up-to-date analysis and opinion on every Albion game. Subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify and YouTube to get notified whenever we release a new episode of the Baggies podcast. So much to discuss with this game. Obviously, it followed on from a tool draw, a last-minute heartbreaking equaliser from Keen and Davis against Aston Villa. I think most of us were fairly optimistic going into the game. I think we're a bit fearful. Obviously, we've got such a fantastic record against Wolves over the past 10 years or maybe even 50, 25 years that it is now. And we didn't really want to lose that record, of course. There's a bit of nerves going into every derby. I think everybody knows that. And I think everybody took that into account. I think there was a bit of anxiety. Lots of Wolves fans getting them, uh, themselves set up for a fall. Um, but... They still haven't beaten us for 25 years at the Hawthorns or 10 years at the Molyneux. So not doing too badly, are we, for little old Albion? But the game was it was, it was a bit of a weird one. It was good for entertainment. I mean, the pitch was absolutely soaked. Let's be honest, the, the weather conditions were appalling. I mean, that's fair to say. There was water all over the pitch. There was, um, you know, splashes of puddles every time somebody went in for a sliding challenge. It led to the game becoming a bit disjointed, in my opinion. I think um, the, it was almost becoming a bit more open thanks to the rain because teams were... We were, we were it's almost like you're, you're wading through quicksand. I mean, lots of our players are already because they're quite slow, but uh, it was like we were raid, wading through quicksand. And I thought we were really good um, in the after about 75 minutes. In terms of before that, I thought Wolves really dominated. I think they look the better side. Obviously, they, they probably are the better side. Let's be honest. They've spent a lot of money on that team. And they've, I mean, be it they were, had a few injuries yesterday. A few key, key players out. Jimenez was out like he was the last time. Uh, my opinion, what was the best player this season? Pedro Neto wasn't playing. He was injured as well. So my thoughts on that were sort of that they haven't got the best team. But... They still dominated the ball. They still had a lot of the ball. They still had, didn't make many clear chances. Let's let's be fair about that. I think the clear cut chances in the game really did belong to us. I thought the Gallagher chance was quite a big one. I thought also um, I th the Diagne chance in the first half. I think if somebody had been following up on that header that was blocked off the line by Roman Sice, it you know somebody could have tapped that in very very easily and i don't think we really took that opportunity which was a bit disappointing because i think we're too nice i think we let oppo the opponents get first to the ball however i thought we were quite physical i think that's something that i haven't seen from us too much this this uh this season i think we were really physical i think we uh overpowered wolves in that sense i think they didn't like it i could see a lot of fans complaining about how rough we were being on the pitch i think it's the first time i've seen that from us really i you know, I was quite pleased with the way that we were putting our weight about. We've got it. We we've got the taller side out of the two, probably the more 
uh, strong, stronger side of the two as well. So it's quite interesting to see us um, exploit that weakness of Wolves potentially with a lot of younger players in the team. Um, I'm going to go through the lineup now for Albion. I'm going to take you through and I'll show you who I thought was good, who I thought was not so good. And I'll sort of give you my thoughts and a bit of a rating for each one. And hopefully you guys can debate this in the comments or the review section if you're if you're on Spotify. Feel free to just tweet me, actually. That'll probably be a reasonable start. Johnston, really good. Some decent saves in that game. Uh, a couple from long range, I think. Um, he really did do well. He, In terms of stats, he made nine saves, five diving saves, six of them inside the box, uh, six throws, a high claim as well. I actually, I wasn't too um he wasn't his distribution was all right in this game to be fair i think the wind and the rain helped it sort of drive across the surface but he did well because for a goalkeeper to play in these conditions it's very very difficult i think you see a lot of um you see a lot of goalkeepers and that ball is very greasy when it's raining so the ball's going to spin across the surface at a very much higher rate so i feel like johnson did really well to cope with some of them balls and so did patricio to be fair to him he did that as well. There were a few balls that came high up and they were caught by the wind when Patricio came to catch them. So fair play to them. Uh, and, and fair play to most of the defenders, to be honest. Um, Jay, for me, had a bit of a nightmare in, in the first half, I think it was, when he decided to dwell on the ball in the 18-yard box, which I thought was just plain stupid from Semi. I thought, you know, you're better than that. He made a mistake last week against, um, against um, sorry, uh, Aston Villa, which led to the penalty. It was a bit clumsy from Ajay, not very switched on, but he did have a chance as well. In, in that He had a header in the box, I think, which could have led to a goal. Carl Bartley, uh, he had a hand in the Wolves' his first goal. I mean, for me, he could have caused a, a better block to that shot. Um, Fabio Silva sort of had it sort of cannoned off him and went in the net. I think it was a bit, it was very lucky in the way that Wolves got their goal, let's be honest, but in terms of the balance of play, I don't think it was too lucky. Um, Carl Bartley was very good. Uh, and apart from that, very winning headers, doing his best, just being as physical as he can. Uh, and he did work hard, And but the only thing is he could have put his body in the way of that ball. So when he's clearing the ball, he needs to get his body behind it rather than it being sort of a hooked clearance, which is what happened. And that led to him uh, causing, it caused him problems. And this led to, obviously, the ball going in the back of the net, which obviously is not what anyone wants. Dara O'Shea, again the victim of Sam's tactical disorganisation and almost not knowing which formation works. We know the three at the back doesn't work. We discovered it against Fulham because they cut us open twice in about 20 minutes with Bobby Deckard over Reed hitting the post once and scoring with one of them. So for me, O'Shea, I think he's a bit unfortunate. I, the only reason I, th I assume that he kept Ajayi on rather than O'Shea was because um, Adama Traore was still on the pitch. And obviously, Adama Traore, friend, product, he's probably one of the worst in the league, let's let's be quite honest. But for everything else, the running, the dribbling, the speed, he's probably one of the better players in the league for, in that sense. So for me, I think it, has to, it had to be O'Shea to go off. It was unfortunate because he's done such a good job and he did such a good job in the game. And he was very tactically astute. I thought he was very good winning header, passing calmly. I think O'Shea's really improved this season for me. He's been very underrated. Um, I know he didn't do so well when he's playing right back, but that's because he's not a right back. He's a centre back. He's a traditional centre half. So for me, it needs to be a bit more. Um, it needs to be a bit more kind of tactically switched on for Maladice because the three at the back doesn't work for us. I know it. it we expected probably. Will we expected them to line up with a three at the back, but they didn't. So why are we still bothering with um? Why are we still bothering with the not three at the back? It's a bit a bit strange for me. Um, it, I don't know. We 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 sort of it wasn't working for us. Let's face it. We're getting isolated. The wing backs and then the centre backs were getting isolated against the wingers, and it just wasn't a recipe for success at all. Um, also for me, we're going into the. Uh, midfield and I guess Furlong was playing right wing back had an all right game did a lot of heading in the box and just did a general good defending job Connor Townsend was phenomenal I'll put that out there he was great Connor Townsend a massive fair play to him did really really well I thought he battled well put in the cross that scored the goal I thought he you know he excellently excellently um managed the game excellently managed uh, a lot of the Wolves players when they were drifting over to his side. So yeah, for me, Townsend was one of the better players on the pitch. I think he worked really hard and obviously he's very tenacious. Put in a quality ball for the cross as well for the Diagonese goal. So yeah, definitely Townsend. 
uh, was was very good for me. Ainsley Maitland Niles was also uh, he was all right. I think there was a bit of I think I don't think good conditions. I'm not going to make excuses for him, but I don't. He didn't really get on well with the conditions. He kept slipping. He kept losing the ball, but he wasn't as good as he was against Southampton, which is probably the best he's been for us for me. Uh, then into Yukushlu, um, of course he was good. Uh, he, st- he looked a bit average when the conditions really started to set in. He lost a bit of com- control over the ball. But for me, he- he's so good, Yukushlu. I mean, you have to make him your top priority next season, whatever division you're in. I know he probably won't come to us, but not if we're especially when we're in the championship. But I think we need to we need to give a good fist of trying to keep him uh, at the club. I think that'd be definitely worthwhile. Gallagher was it was perfect for him because this weather was horrible, but he just loves to just get his roll his sleeves up and get himself absolutely filthy and just start sliding everywhere, chopping people down. So for me, Gallagher was um, decent apart from the chance he missed, and I'll tell you for why because he needed to raise that shot a bit more. It's almost a pass back. He just needs to drill it a bit more, um, actually to, into the goal. But Gallagher, yeah, missed a bit of a sitter for me. I thought he could have done a lot better with it, and I thought we could have potentially killed the game off by then. Mateus Pereira, I don't think he, to be honest, I don't think he was as good as he has been recently for us. I thought he worked hard. I thought there was a lot of tracing back from him and a lot of trying to high press the Wolves' defence, and I thought that was really good from him. So yeah, he wasn't he wasn't too bad at all. I thought he did he did his best really with the tools he had and there was a little movement in the way of attacking movement because we took we didn't decide to start robinson for this game the agne up front he's he's a weird one isn't he because he doesn't do anything uh, apart from like anything along the ground so he won't participate in any of the aerial duels that are given to him he'll only participate along the ground and occasionally he'll pop up with a goal but which isn't good enough for a striker, but I kind of have to. I like him at the same time because I think he does care for the club, and I think you know he's really tr- doing his best to, with with what he's got to do. I thought he worked pretty hard today, yes, on Monday, sorry, and he tried. Um, but he's just a bit of an odd one. I, I just can't help but not dislike him. I think a lot of people do dislike him, and people say he's like the the worst, the B Tech Solomon Rondon who we've got over here. In the uh, in the form of a signed uh, football card, but for me, Rondon is is a you know he was a great player for us and he he worked really hard and but Diagne doesn't seem to work too hard but I can't help but not dislike him I think a lot of people do dislike him but I can't help but not dislike him it's a bit it's a bit of a strange one I know, I don't really know how to explain it but that's that's sort of my qualm about him uh, in terms of Wolves I, I'm going to give Wolves a compliment now because I thought Vitinha who I know from the fact of having Wolves fan support Wolves supporting friends was really good for me I thought he started um, you know I thought it was um, I thought it was decent because I thought they you know he drifted into the areas that he needed to and he tried to create chances Ruben Neves I know he's a bit short on match sharpness having not played for not played for for a couple of weeks before that Burnley game, but he was pretty bad. I mean, the pass accuracy and the, the the most passes will tell you different, but he was pretty awful. The amount of quality that he could have had on the ball and didn't. A notable shout, uh, Ray and Eight Nuri for Wolves at left back as well was for me was quite good. He was very energetic, wants to go forward. Might not be the best defensively, but still worked his weight with with that. Our goal, I thought Connor Townsend again was really good for that. I thought Diagne had the chance in the first half. I don't think he personally should have scored with the with the header he had towards goal. However, I do think everybody else should have been following up because I don't think there was en- enough done for that. Yeah, I, th- I think it was a bit bit odd. Um, yeah, I thought I just thought it was a weird, weird, weird game. So they were on top for most of the game, but yeah, I can still say that I think we should have killed the game off with the chances that we had. It was a bit of a strange one, but so that's the way of football. That's the way the land lies. But if you look at Wolves and you've spent, oh, I can't remember what it was, like 328 million quid on players, and we've had the most appalling season, and it's just a bit embarrassing for them now. They can't quite beat us. I mean, we've got such a weird squad and such a weird, like, um, like a weird set of players, but it's yeah. I'll, I'll find the tweet for you. It's from a, an account called the the Rainbow Stand for for West Bromwich Albion fans, and I can sort of find it out for you. 
So the Wolves have waited eight years, 110 months, 481 weeks, 3,368 days, 80,828 hours, 4 million eight hundred and forty nine seven hundred and three minutes two hundred and ninety million nine hundred and eighty two hundred thousand one hundred and ninety two seconds spending three hundred and sixty seven five uh five hundred and thirty seven so they've spent three hundred and sixty seven million to get themselves to put right that five one massacre but they failed against one of the poorest teams in the Premier League. It's a telling story. Um, I mean, they were waiting for this game and they could not win. And that is why the Black Country, for me, is still blue and white. I mean, I know we're going down, but you've got to beat what's in front of you if you want to be one of the best teams. And unfortunately, Wolves have failed on two occasions this season. They're not a bad side, but surely you should be able to beat Little Old Albion if that's the case. I'm now going to go on to talk about a bit more of a longer term thing for Albion because I think we've got a problem and it needs to be solved because we're going to go down to the championship let's face it that was our relegation confirmed uh i mean villa was our reg i actually think crystal palace quite a number of weeks ago was our relegation confirmed let's be completely fair with each other but um for me i think uh, we just need to think about things carefully if we go down to the championship not rushing in not Rushing straight in because we think that we can, you know, get on the cheapest option. Who's going to be the manager? I.e. buying in somebody with little championship experience. So we're not doing. I don't want to see us do that. I want to see us buy somebody or get a manager in. If it's not, if it's going to be Sam Allardyce, I can accept it. That's fine because he's done a good job with what he's been given. Um, eventually, I think it was just a bit of a shock to the system at the start to realise how defensively bad and unfit this team was. But I think now he's got it sussed out. I think with his players, he can make a really good side. I think you need to back him. That's the only thing I've got to say, because you didn't back the last manager um, in the right areas. So you let him take a bit too much of the loan signing control. Like, you know, you want to sign all the loan players. So you need to almost just trust Allardyce, because I know you've trusted Billich and he's wasted a bit of your money on ineffective players. But I think you should trust Allardyce, because I think he's in that, almost playing the director of football role. I know he's not going to, but I think he's got the chance to build a team that's going to work in the in the championship. And I'd like to see him given the shot. I mean, Big Sam's teams have always been very robust and they've always been very good Premier League teams. He has a few cham- he's had a few championship opportunities. I think West Ham, I think Blackburn and I think who else has he had? I can't remember. And Bolton, I think he's had championship opportunities. I think he's gone up each time, but through the playoffs, I think he's never been automatically promoted. But for me, I think Allardyce needs to be the man to take us forward. I think you need to trust him. I think you need to mould to him. Like I said in, in the podcast with Nick Miller from The Athletic, I think that was something that I found quite interesting, that Sam Allardyce will want us to mould to him and they'll want us, he'll want us to give him the needs that he requires to get to get a good team together. For me, I think we can. I think we can go back up. I think the quality of player, but I think you need to trust in the manager. You need to give him the funds that he needs. Don't make the mistake of trying to do things on the cheap because when you do things on the cheap, you get up to the division that you want to be in and you realise, oh crap, none of these players are good enough. Why, where have all these, why, why are all these players not playing well enough? And my answer would be because you bought them all on the cheap. You look at the value of our squad and how much you've spent on them. Johnston, five million. Carl Bartley, I think he costs like three million. Uh, Dara O'Shea, probably probably three or next to nothing. Connor Townsend, one million, I think. Um, Donna Phil, one million again. So you're building off a base of quite little funds. The only players I think have cost the most money are the ones that actually aren't playing. That's Grady Dean Garner of 18 million and Carlin Grant of 15 plus million. Matez Pereira, the best player in sight, eight million pounds. I mean, that's that's just a good sign. And so is Sam Johnson, and let's be fair. But I mean, I'm not saying these, any of these players need replacing. But look at the values. If you do things on the cheap, you're probably going to end up going back to where you were before. It's not really a sustainable thing to do at the football club. So for me, you need to back Allardyce. You need to give him the money. You need to give him the funds, the access to whatever we're doing and whoever we're going to be playing. So yeah, it's for me going to have to be an interesting season uh, and an interesting season next season. I think the end of the season, 
Allardyce needs to decide, is he coming or is he going? But I think he wants an honest chat with the owners about how um, he wants his honest opinion uh, and his honest thoughts on what the club's going to do financially after relegation. Are they going to falter? Are they going to have enough money left? Have they got money saved that they can put back into the club? But the problem is I don't think the owners will want to be there. I think they need to leave. I think they need to sell the club. And the mistake they've made is not investing in the club. Because you want to sell this club for as much as you want, right? You want to sell it for as much as you got, you paid for it, plus more if you can. But the problem is you need to invest to make that club better. That's the thing. If I spend, you know, years um, painting and decorating houses, but I do it on the cheap and everything falls apart, I'm not going to sell the houses for very much, am I? So if he's, if he, you know, he's try, he needed to rele- renovate the club and sell a club with lots of valuable assets. I don't think there are many valuable assets in this club. I think there's two or three at the moment of Johnston, Pereira. Uh, I mean, not not belonging to us, but Yakushlu's a valuable asset, but he's not he's not going to be here next season. Uh, maybe Dean Garner could be if he if he pulls himself together. But for me, there's no valuable assets in this in this club apart from the the two that I've mentioned with Pereira and Johnston. Apart from that, where's your value coming from in the club? You haven't created sustainable success like teams like Norwich, like teams like Brentford do. They've got forty, fifty million pound players on their teams because they've bought them at a good price. They've got a good scouting team to go and find those players. They're not trying to do things last minute. They've got a very, very clear plan. For me, we don't. We need to work one out, and Allardyce needs to be in charge next season if that's the case, and you need to back him. But that's my thoughts. Feel free to tweet me at the Baggies Pod and give yours. So that brings us to the end of the Baggies podcast for this week. Apologies for the slightly late episode. Of course, I'm going to try and get you on on Monday, I think, after the Arsenal game. We may see a West Bromwich Albion game very, very soon, however, as I've just noticed that the ballot has been open for West Ham and West Brom tickets. So that'll be interesting. I'll hope to go to that, perhaps, but we'll see about we'll see what happens with that. See if you can see if we can get selected. But it'd be nice to be back inside the Hawthorns, even if it's just for a little bit. But hopefully that is the case. But anyway, if you have enjoyed this episode, make sure to subscribe and make sure to comment your thoughts or tweet me at the Baggies Pod and I can get back to you and we can have a nice chat about what's been going on. I'm always DMs are open and all that, so if you want to have a chat or anything, feel free to do so. And I'll see you in the next podcast, which will be Monday at 5 p.m. to my knowledge, unless the Arsenal game has suddenly been moved by a TV company. But yeah, it'll be here Monday at 5 p.m. And I'll see you next time, Baggies fans. Goodbye.